Guys, I figured it out. I finally figured out how to take down these freaking turtles, and we're going to kick off my Forbidden West Master Machine Hunting series with how to take them down. No, but seriously, the Shell Snapper is totally one of, if not the toughest machine in Forbidden West. At the very least, it's gotta take the crown for the most annoying machine. You guys know what I'm talking about. The amount of underground burrowing this thing does in combination with the endless ice blast and insanely fast rocket launchers is just ridiculous. So I've put in the time to fight dozens of these guys and I finally have a good strategy for them. Now if you guys are looking forward to more machine hunting guides, then definitely make sure you're subscribed because I'm going to be doing full in-depth videos for all the toughest machines in Forbidden West. But for now, I have the strategy for you guys to master shell snapper hunting. So let's dive into it. Okay, so like many of you, when I came across the first shell snapper in the quest with Talana, I definitely struggled a bit. Now with that shell snapper, you actually have some environmental features like rock piles you can use to help take it down, plus you have Talana helping you a bit. So we all struggled through that and we said we'd figure out a better strategy for these things later on. But what's crazy is that after fighting dozens of shell snappers to make this video, I'm convinced that first one in the Talana quest is actually a weaker version. All the shell snappers I fought after that one seem even harder, but with the right strategy and some practice, they do become manageable. So first off, the shell snapper's main weak point is the collection of freeze sacks on its belly. There's four freeze sacks down there, and if you can get them to explode, it will deal a big chunk of damage to the shell snapper. Now you'll see a lot of suggestions on forums and in other videos to carefully place traps along its path or try to place them where the shell snapper is going to land when it launches itself into the air. These aren't bad suggestions, but they can be difficult to pull off. In the case of placing traps along its path, it's usually really difficult to avoid being noticed by other machines in the area or the shell snapper itself. Trying to place traps where it's going to land is even more tricky because it's hard to consistently predict exactly where it's going to land. But there is a good way to explode those sacks without traps, and all you need is a sharp shot bow. So my strategy revolves around combining two of my favorite skills, the brace shot weapon technique and the Range Master Valor Surge. Brace Shot is a weapon technique that will basically let you launch a rocket off your Sharp Shot bow. As for the Range Master Valor Surge, I know I've mentioned in a couple of my other videos that I thought Critical Boost was the best Valor Surge, but I've actually shifted to favoring Range Master because it increases damage from bows more than Critical Boost does. Plus, it also allows you to regenerate stamina faster so you can use weapon techniques like Brace Shot more often. So similar to my strategy I showed in my video on killing the first Tremor Tusk, we're going to use Brace Shot and Range Master in combination to explode at least one freeze sack on the shell snapper's belly. Now, this is possible even though you don't have a perfectly clear shot at its belly because the brace shot explosion has a pretty big area of effect. But to pull this off, we need to play a bit tactically and position ourselves to get a good line of sight of the ground under the shell snapper's belly. We essentially want to aim for the ground directly underneath the freeze sacks. I prefer to do this by getting up on a boulder to get a better angle, but it can be done from the ground as well. Now, after you've exploded the freeze sack on its belly, you immediately want to begin removing shell bolts. The shell bolts are these rectangular components on the perimeter of its shell, and they hold the shell on the shell snapper's back. If you can remove one, a chunk of shell will come flying off with it, which is important for two reasons. First, the super annoying frost blaster cannons are attached to the shell. These are the things that launch rockets at you ridiculously fast, so getting rid of them tips the scales in our favor. Removing the shell means removing the cannons. The second reason is because the shell is covered in a bunch of weak points, like the plasma generators and kinetic dynamo, which we want to be able to hit. Now to remove these shell bolts, we need something that can deal a lot of tear damage. If you happen to have the Death Seeker Shadow Hunter Bow, then I would recommend using a triple shot of advanced hunter arrows to deal tear damage since tear on that bow is super high. You could also use advanced precision arrows on the Forge Fire Sharp Shot Bow, but both of those bows can only be purchased at the arena, and I know you guys are going to want to take down shell snappers before spending a bunch of time racking up arena medals. So, short of those two bows, your best option is going to be a bow that can fire tear blast arrows, and there's actually only two bows in the game that can do this. One is the Cleaving Sharp Shot Bow that you're given at the start of the Broken Sky main quest and the other is the Glow Blast Sharp Shot Bow you can buy in Thornmarsh. And just to show you guys how powerful this strategy is, I'm actually going to use the weaker Cleaving Sharp Shot Bow here. So as soon as we explode some freeze sacks with the Range Master Brace Shot combo, we want to switch to Tear Blast Arrows and land a couple on a Shell Bolt. I find it's best to prioritize the two front Shell Bolts because blasting off these parts of the shell will disable the front cannons, which are the ones that fire at you the most. As a side benefit, these Shell Bolts are also a key upgrade resource for a number of weapons and outfits, so tearing them off with Tear Blast Arrows is a great way of harvesting them. Now you can go ahead and tear off all the other shell chunks if you want to, but I generally make sure to get the front two off and then knock off the others only if I get a good opportunity to land tear blast arrows on them. Just remember, you have to hit the shell bolts. Landing tear blast arrows on the shell itself won't really do anything. Once you have the front sections off, it's best to start using more brace shots to deal damage to the big kinetic dynamo component, which is a weak point that's easy to hit, or you can target the plasma generators all around the dynamo. If at any time you don't have enough weapon stamina to launch a brace shot, then you should instead focus on landing tear blast 
arrows on more shell bolts, or simply hit the kinetic dynamo with hard point arrows from your hunter bow. Keep repeating these steps and you'll eventually have the shell snapper down. Now, there's no getting around the fact that fighting a shell snapper requires patience and pacing. These things have a huge amount of health, and they have a very annoying habit of diving underground, sometimes for extended periods of time. You should take those opportunities to craft more ammo, heal, and reposition for when the shell snapper launches itself out of the ground. Speaking of which, you want to avoid these belly slams by using a combination of sliding and dodging. Without the dodge prowess skill we had in Zero Dawn, it can be difficult to get Aloy out of the way of these massive machines. I found that sliding with a dodge thrown in at the end is an effective way to avoid both the shell snapper's body slams and its ice blasts. To make this tactic a bit easier, I would recommend turning on the auto sprint setting so all you need to trigger a slide is to hit square. Alright, let's put it all together and take a look at the live combat. Alright guys, so we're going to do this here at the Desert Shell Snapper site. You can see this um, save file I have loaded is level 26. And then my Suntouch Hunter Bow is level 3, no coils on it. Same thing with the Cleaving Sharp Shot Bow. Uh, Nora Sentinel Outfit is also level 3. And I have just a basic melee defense weave on there as well as a concentration regen weave. So nothing crazy in terms of equipment. Uh, Difficulty is on very hard. And then aim assist is on default. So if you're on easier settings, then you'll have a little bit easier time. I've got some health potions ready to go here, and then cleanse potions as well, which we'll use if we get hit by the frost blasts to clear the freeze effect on Aloy. And then um, I like to kill at least one of these burrowers to start things off. So we're going to have to lure him over here. And the reason for this is there's two things. One is it's going to give us a little bit of a uh, valor if we don't have much to begin with. And then the other thing you'll see in a second here is that it's going to actually get the shell snapper to come out without actually alerting him to where we are at, where we are. So I'll get up on this rock and you'll be able to see. So he's there. He is right there. And I like to scan him first. So that's kind of a nice way to start things off because otherwise you have to run around to the mounds, right? And then he like pops out. So it's a little bit better, I think. So then I like to highlight the shell bolts. I would highlight the sparkers if I had like the lightning hunter bow or another shock bow on me. Uh, but we're not going to use that here, so I won't highlight them. Plasma generators are good to highlight. Chill water sacks we definitely want to highlight. Kinetic dynamo I also like to highlight. And then <laughs> we can... We can highlight these frost blast cannons. Um, they're super annoying. Now, if you want to see them glow before they fire, because they do glow right before they fire, um, then don't highlight them, because it'll be easier to see them glow. But I'll, hide them, I'll highlight them here so you can see that we're aiming at them. Now, we need to be a little tactical here, a little bit patient, because um, I want a really clear shot on under his belly to hit those freeze sacks. So I'm going to wait for him to reposition. Okay, so I think we're going to have a clear shot here. So I'm going to trigger my Range Master Valor Surge. You can also use Critical Boost or Power Shots if you like those better. And then I'm going to use the Brace Shot Weapon Technique. And you can hold this as long as you want. Um, and we're going to try and hit the ground right underneath a couple of his Freeze Sacks like that. And then I'm going to right away go to my Terror Blast Arrows and hit one of these um, Shell Bolts. So you can see we tore off part of the shell there. I'll get the other one. We didn't quite tear off his shell there, but we'll get it when he comes out. So <laughs> this is the really annoying thing that these guys do is, as you guys know, they like to hide underground. I've noticed if you're like somewhat close to them, but not right on top, you definitely don't want to be right on top. But if you're somewhat close to them, they'll pop out and like usually they won't know what direction to jump. So I don't know what he's doing right now, but... If we just kind of stay close to him like that, then he, yeah, he jumps out like over you like that or in the other direction sometimes. So I'm going to keep focusing on knocking off these shell chunks. We'll reposition a little bit over here. I like to kind of draw him into this open area if I can. There I saw a rocket coming at me, so I dodged. Uh, I dodge these like back and forth. It's the best thing. Or you can slide and dodge. I'll try to show you guys that next time he does it. So here's like a slide and dodge. Didn't quite have to do it there, but that would be the idea. Uh, we don't have a clear shot on any of the shell bolts anymore. Slide and then dodge. So I'm actually going to go ahead and get another 
race shot on him while he's burying himself. So I'm going to kind of... I'm going to try to follow him. Now he's going to do this a lot, which is super annoying. And if you don't... If you, like, keep your distance from him while he's underground, he's just going to do that over and over again. So that's why you want to get, like, only... Be, like, a moderate distance from him. Try and get at least this cannon off the back, because I, I hate the freaking cannons. Need some more arrows. I can also use the terrain like this to block his ice blasts, which he might do here. Yeah. So you can use the terrain if you want. And I'm actually going to go ahead and do another brace shot on him, on these plasma generators which will interrupt his um, ice blast sometimes, like you saw there. And we'll get another brace shot off. Craft some more arrows. Whoop, I not see him shooting there. So I'm going to take a cleanse potion to clear that. Craft some more arrows. And he's going underground, of course. So kind of keep that moderate distance from him. He's going to sh shoot ice. We're gonna dodge the sides. You really want to wait till like the last second to dodge those, I found. Slide and then dodge. Also works. Now if you want these shell bolts, then you have to use um terror blast arrows to get them off. And you do need them for a lot of weapon upgrades. So you can hit these vents in the back. Oh, I didn't quite get it there, but. If you don't have a clear shot, like, at the back shell bolts from the front, then you can use the vents as, like, a target. I'll try and knock off that cannon. Nope. Alright, so I'm gonna do another, um, race shot on him, actually. There, we actually blew up one of his plasma generators. So I'm going to do another brace shot before he goes down, and we're chipping away at him here. Craft some more arrows while he's down. Slide, dodge. So you'll get stunned a little bit, but... Um, so I can hear it buzzing, that's how I knew that that was going to happen. You can sort of see it glowing there. So, I'm going to actually go ahead and trigger another Valor Surge again. And see if we can get off another Brace Shot on him. There, we actually stunned him. So, if we're lucky, we'll be able to get off another Brace Shot right on his belly here. And there we go. Got him. As you guys can see, opening with that combination of Range Master and Brace Shot to the underbelly really gave us an early advantage. Now, I only hit two free sacks there, but it's possible to hit three or even four at once if you can land the shot in just the right spot, which will deal an even bigger chunk of damage. You also saw how important it was to get the dodge timing down for those big ice blasts. The biggest tip I can give you here is to wait until the last second to dodge them. If you dodge too early, the area of effect damage will get you even if you clear the ice blast itself. You also saw how effective the slide dodge combo was. I have to admit, it took me a while to retrain myself to do this after relying on dodge prowess and zero dawn, but I can promise you it's worth the effort to master the slide dodge. Also, keep in mind I literally practiced on dozens of shell snappers before showing you guys this combat, so I certainly had frustrating moments not every fight is going to go as cleanly as the one I showed you here. Take the time to practice and reload from your last save so you can practice without wasting resources. And hey, it's totally okay to get frustrated with these shell snappers. Like I said, I personally think they're the most annoying machines we've ever had. Now I do want to give you guys some alternate and advanced tactics that I've been playing with. First, you can use blast bombs to explode the freeze sacks instead of the valor boosted brace shot like I did. However, keep in mind that you'll need a pretty powerful blast sling like the barrage blast sling for this to be effective. As you saw here, I was able to take down the shell snap using only blue rarity bows. As for more advanced tactics, I would first recommend adding in the lightning hunter bow so you can hit shock canisters on the shell snappers back with shock arrows to trigger a shock explosion. This is really powerful because it will stun the shell snapper for a period of time, allowing you to reposition and hit components like the shell bolts or deal a bunch of direct 
damage to weak points like the Kinetic Dynamo. You might also want to start learning how to use a Shredder Gauntlet to deal damage to the Shell Snapper. Shredder Gauntlets are a bit tricky to get the hang of, but they're actually very powerful and they can be good raw damage dealers for big machines like Shell Snappers. Alright guys, that's my Master Machine Hunting Guide for Shell Snappers. I know pretty much everyone has been struggling with these insane turtles, so I hope this guide helped you out. If they ever do update the Shell Snappers behavior, I'll be sure to do an updated guide if it's needed. But until then, make sure you're subscribed so you know when I have more machine hunting guides for you. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.